Hi guys, welcome back to the Coffee and Hero Show. So this is the uh, weekly show where we take you through some of the new releases that have come in this week. These will be titles out for release on the 16th of June. So as ever, we've got a little bit of a mix graphic novel wise of new releases out this week and also established classics we wanted to get back in or gap fillers we wanted to get back in, that kind of thing. So a really good mix of stuff this week. You know, uh, you know if you look at the pile here at the very top, first of all, there's a, a good few volumes of The Walking Dead. So what we try to do with The Walking Dead is we try to have all the volumes in stock at all times. You know, The Walking Dead, of course, Robert Kirkman, Tony Moore at the start, and then Charlie Adler taking over. It's an established classic of the comic genre. It's uh, 32 volumes in total. So everybody's reading it at different paces. You know, we might get someone who just wants to get into it. So we try to have number one in stock at all times. We may have people who are sort of 10, 12 volumes in and need number 13, you know, that kind of thing. So what we try to do is have the entire run in at any one time so that if you really enjoy a volume and you're in a hurry to get the next volume that you should be able to pop down to us and we'll have the next one in stock. So, you know, as I say, we were just topping up this week. So volumes in were number one, uh, 25, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31 and 32. So that finishes it all off, you know, with 32 being an oversized trade to finish as it contains the oversized uh, issue 193 that finished off The Walking Dead. So, uh, so yeah, complete uh, run of The Walking Dead on the shelves. Uh, nice big omnibus in this week, which is sure to go quickly, I have no doubt, because it is one of the best things ever committed to paper. Uh, so this is the Batman run. This is volume one by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. So this was their new 52 run. With this one, you're essentially getting uh, issues zero to 33. So that's gonna cover your Court of Isles, your City of Isles, your death of the family, uh, your year zero as well, or zero year, I always say year zero, uh, zero year, as well as some of the uh, the annuals at that time, and also one or two of the Villains Month issues as well. So this is just, this is Batman at its absolute best. You know, it's, it's dark mystery, there's horror in here, there's great action, there's great Bat Family stuff. It really is one of the absolute best runs you will ever see. Uh, the RRP in this one comes in at 110, but again, we always like to try and do our best with prices. We we know we can't compete with the likes of Amazon and, and so on and so forth, whatever, but we'll always do our best to keep our prices uh, as low as possible. So it's a 110 RRP, but we sell it at 100. But, you know, again, you're, it's great value because you're getting nearly 40 issues there. So £2.50 an issue and genuinely one of the best Batman runs, in my humble opinion, of all time. So that's that. Uh, next up we have a graphic novel, so we have Godzilla. This is a collection of three different series. Uh, it goes under the uh, name of Unnatural Disasters. So what you've got here is a collection containing Godzilla Legends, Godzilla in Hell, and Godzilla Rage Against Time. You know, this includes work from creators such as James Stoko, Chris Mowry, uh, Ulysses Farinas, Simon Gain, Dave Watchster, and more. So the Godzilla stuff is, is flying out at the moment. It's... Uh, it never seems to be big massive print runs when it comes to the IDW Godzilla stuff. So uh, we tend to get them in, they tend to disappear quickly. But if you're a Godzilla fan, that, that's a great way to read them. Instead of collecting those three individual volumes, you've essentially got the equivalent of an omnibus there. A uh, little restock then, we have Hellblazer Rise and Fall. So this was a DC Black Label title. This is written by our good friend Tom Taylor with art by Derek Robertson. So co-creator of The Boys. This was a three volume series. This was excellent. So it was, it was nice to read a bit of Hellblazer that you could just jump straight into it. You know, they've collected all of the Constantine Hellblazer omnibuses together and that's still coming out. It's around 30 volumes in or something like that. So there's a lot to that, but it's great just to have a, a great one-off story. Really cool art. If you're a football fan as well, there's some little nods to Liverpool. Boo in here as uh, Tom Taylor's an unashamed Liverpool fan. But yeah, it's a really good title. Don't hold that against them, by the way. But yeah, really, really cool one-shot uh, series. And again, another great example of Black Label. You know, Black Label is designed to be just stories you can jump straight into. You don't need to have read anything previous and everything you need to know about that continuity or that world is contained within. Definitely one of the ones I'm looking forward to most this week. There is, of course, a copy in my box. So we have Deceased Hope at World's End. So Deceased has been a favourite of mine ever since it came out again. Tom Taylor, notice a pattern here, uh, on writing duties with this one. But you had Deceased, then you have Deceased Unkillables, and then Deceased Dead Planet. And there was a digital only one, which has now become digital first, a series called Hope at World's End. And I, I stayed away from it all. I just wanted to read it once it got collected into a hardcover trade. So 
There was uh, 15 chapters to this in total, which I think is about the equivalent of about five issues uh, in normal standard comic terms. So looking forward to this. This is, uh, this is the only deceased I haven't read yet. So it's nice to get some original content there. We have the next hardcover out from James Tinian's run. So James Tinian, of course, took over Batman at number 86. Uh, first story arc is available in hardcover, Their Dark Designs. The second story arc is also available, Joker War. And then this is the third one that introduces a character called Ghostmaker. And it goes under the uh, the name Ghost Stories. Again, he's just he's knocking it out of the park, uh, Tinian, at the moment. This one is predominantly drawn by Gia March. We have also some great stuff in here from James Stoko, who's a, an artist I'm a big fan of. Because not only does this contain the next Batman issues you need, which is 101 to 105, but it also contains Batman Annual number 5. And then there's also a story that's been taken out of Detective 1027 that's important to Tinian's run. So they keep releasing these really nicely as well. Lovely hardcovers, great spine design for us OCD freaks. Uh, everything matches up really, really nicely. So get on that. Uh, we have a little bit of Winter Soldier love now. So this is a, a story arc uh, called The Bitter March. This was a five-issue miniseries written by Rick Remender, who, of course, I'm a fan of, given his Deadly Classroom. Uh, and with this one, this is like a, a Cold War era set Winter Soldier story. Really, really good. Uh, I've collected all the single issues of that. I keep getting told this is fantastic and it's probably pretty timely this coming in. So this is the first volume of Loki, Agent of Asgard. This is written by Al Ewing and the artist on this is actually Lee Garbay, who's an artist we enjoy through Shadecraft and also did a series called Skyward. And uh, I've been told this is one of the best Loki runs. I don't know if there's certain elements of it have been taken for the TV show. We still haven't watched them. We will watch it soon. Uh, probably when episode two comes out, and just do a double header on that. But this is basically containing Loki Agent of Asgard 1 to 5 and also some material from all new Marvel now, point one. So uh, some good creators on that. So I've no doubt that is a good run. This is an intriguing looking one. This is a new graphic out this week called Jim Lives, uh, the mystery of the lead singer of The Doors and The 27 Club. So for anybody who doesn't know, The 27 Club is essentially this uh, very sad club in music of talented musicians who died at the age of 27. And contained within that was Jim Morrison, you know, Kurt Cobain's another as an example. But there, there's these uh, graphic novels coming out at the moment, original graphic novels, which are being called The Conspiracy Trilogy. Now, the first one came out, we have it in stock as well. It's called Paul is Dead, When the Beatles Lost McCartney. And this is the second chapter in that conspiracy trilogy. So when a correspondent for a popular American newspaper vanishes during a research assignment, his father ventures into the lush colors of a foreign land to find him. His only clue, one final enigmatic message. Jim Morrison isn't dead. He's hiding out here in Italy. I saw him with my own eyes. So yeah, look, and I've uh, copied that for myself. I think that sounds really, really cool. Uh, we have the first volume in of Blade Runner 2019. We've had volume two and three of this for probably about four weeks now. Good old diamond as ever. I order one, two, and three. They send two and three. They don't send one. Well, now we have one. There's been some really, really good stuff. This is written by uh, Michael Green, art by Mike Johnson. And there's been some wonderful stuff in the Blade Runner universe in graphic novels, especially the Blade Runner origin stuff that is coming out in single issues at the moment. But if you fancy jumping into the Blade Runner world, this has done with a lot of care and attention and a lot of great nods for fans as well. Uh, we're continuing to get in the old epic collections. So these are becoming more and more popular in stores. People maybe gravitate towards the origins of a lot of characters. So with this one, this is the Incredible Hulk Epic Collection. This is actually volume one, uh, titled Man or Monster. So it comes from the superpower team of Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. So this is covering the period from 1962 to 1964. So in here you have Incredible Hulk 1 to 6, Fantastic Four 12, 25 and 26. Uh, some Avengers issues, Amazing Spider-Man 14, Tales to Astonish, Journey and the Mystery. So this has, you know, guest appearances by the likes of Ant-Man, Spider-Man, Thor. Basically, all the Artie Hulk stuff is contained within here. Again, these epic collections are selling really well at the moment. I think people have a real craving for the Artie stuff. And these are always full color reprints. There is a Marvel line called Marvel Essential that's really good value, but they reprint everything in black and white. And let's be honest, you want to see all the, that glorious early Car Kirby art in full color. So new one there. A uh, little double dose of Thor for you now. So first of all, we have Thor from Donny Cates uh, and Nick Klein. There's also some art in this one by Aaron Cooter. So this is the second arc for Donny Cates' run. 
This is focusing on the Prey story arc. And it also has a couple of single issues in here that were seen a little bit as filler issues, but I actually thought the story was really, really class about this uh, old car mechanic who could wield Mjolnir. Uh, so really, really cool storyline. And then the six issues with Prey, with everything with Donald Blake is fantastic. Good horror Thor, that. And then the other Thor that came in this week is the third volume of the Complete Collection by Jason Aaron. These are another uh, couple of volumes that seem to sell out really quickly and also go out of print really quickly. Like trying to get the first two volumes of this at the moment, the Jason Iron Run, has proven a little tricky. I've been trying to resource them for the store. But uh, this is essentially Jason Iron and this is the arc that where Jane Foster takes over. This is the Lady Thor stuff. I would imagine a lot of this is going to be coming up in Thor Love and Thunder. Uh, some great artists working on this. You've got Russell Dodderman who went on to do War of the Realms. And Steve Epting as well, who's a favourite artist of mine, especially for a series called Velvet that he worked on with Ed Brubaker. But I'm sure there are many out there who will point me to his Marvel work before that. So that's that. A couple then just to finish off. So we have the first Future State uh, graphic novel collection coming out. So I really like the spine design of this. I really think they've put a bit of effort into this and it's all going to line up nicely. So this is Future State, the next Batman. This is predominantly the stuff written by Oscar winner John Ridley and art by Laura Braga. And there's a lot of content in this, so there is. You've got Future State, the next Batman, one to four. You've also Future State, Nightwing, one and two, and material from Future State, Dark Detective, one and three as well. So, you know, as well as the next Batman stuff in here, you've got stories starring Batgirl, Grifter, The Outsiders, uh, the Gotham City Sirens and the Arkham Knights. I really enjoyed Future State and I think this is a great way to actually uh, read Future State with everything collected all together. And they're basically collecting them as far as I'm aware through uh, different cities, so to speak. So you'll have all the Gotham stuff all in one book, although it will actually be two books because there's Dark Detectives still to come. But then you've got like the Metropolis stuff, so you'll have all the Superman and the Super Family stuff together. And then you have all like all the Justice League, Suicide Squad, all the team books together as well. But this is the first collection out, so that's out this week. Uh, a favourite indie title actually of mine, this was one that I really talked a lot about on the podcast and highly, highly recommend. This is an Aftershock title called Kaiju Score, which is essentially all about these master criminals trying to pull off a heist during a Kaiju attack. In this world, basically, you can almost time uh, Kaiju activity and know when they're going to come up. And obviously, if Kaijus enter a city, people go running, banks are left empty, apartments are left empty, there's no witnesses around. So it's all about these sort of daredevil uh, thieves who are trying to pull off this massive heist during a kaiju attack. Really, really fun. It was only uh, four issues, I believe, but written by James Patrick and art by Rem Brew. This was just a lot of fun. Highly recommend that personally. And then one last one to finish off for the week, and we may as well save one of the best to last. So we have the next volume of our good friend Kanto uh, hitting this week. This is Kanto 2, The Hollow Men. So written by David M. Boer, art by Drew Zucker. This is the first new material that's come out in graphic novels since the announcement that this is going to be adapted into an animated film, I believe. And it's just such a great story. I mean, we, we talk about Kanto all the time. We recommend it all the time. And the second volume was just as good as the first. But not only are you getting the five issues of Hollow Men in here as well, there was a little one shot that linked Kanto to Kanto 2, uh, which was called The Clockwork Fairies. And they've contained that within as well. So... They're being really diligent about including all the Kanto material in the trades. There is currently a, a mini series called Kanto in the City of Giants, which is three issues. And then that's going to lead to Kanto 3 Lionhearted. So there's there's clearly big plans for a little tin night. And when it's this good, why wouldn't there be? So Kanto 2 out this week as well. So you have it. So that's uh, all of the new graphic novels that have arrived in this week. Uh, again, top ups, new stuff. We're always getting new stock in every single week, you know, not just the new releases, but also classics and things that we see that are gaps on the shelves, that kind of thing. So anything appeal to us ever, just get in touch. We're, we're always more than happy to hold for you until you can get down to the store or just pop in. New comic book day is always the best day to be here. It's always when the shop is at its most stacked. So uh, anyway, hope this proved useful. Hope there's one or two things look good to you there. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in the store. So take it easy.